Hello, and welcome to another episode of Nerd Paints. If you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe below and feel free to post any comments below on any models that you'd like to see painted. So I'm pretty excited for this one. I got this game from Kickstarter not too long ago and it's pretty awesome. I love the Alien movies and this game totally reminded me of those. So I'm excited because for one, we're gonna paint some aliens and I know these aren't the same aliens from the movies, but they're pretty cool nonetheless. I'm also excited because we're gonna paint the exoskeleton armor using some color shift paints. I thought these aliens would be perfect for those. I'll post below a link where I found those paints, but if you'd rather paint with a more standard paint like Citadel, then watch for another video, very similar. Here are a couple intruders I painted using Citadel paints rather than the color shift paints that I'll be posting. So keep an eye out for that if you don't wanna use the color shift paint. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I've already primed it with a black primer. First, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna actually paint the entire model using a gloss black. We're gonna take some Vallejo glossy black. I'm gonna go over the entire model with this glossy black. Once you do, you wanna let it completely dry before you move on to the next step. Okay, next I'm gonna take some abandoned black and I'm gonna add that to my wet palette. After that, I'm gonna take some Lauren Forest. I'm gonna add that on my wet palette right next to the Abaddon Black. And then I'm gonna create a shade between these two. I'm gonna make it fairly dark, so it's almost 50-50 between the two. And then maybe you just wet it down a little bit. I don't want it to be too thick when I apply it to the model. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna paint all of the skin with this. So it might go on fairly thin, so you may wanna add a second layer of this. And then be careful not to get any on his armor or his exoskeleton. If you do, then after you're done with all the skin, then you'll just go back and retouch that up. But just go over all of his skin with this. And then once you're done, I'm gonna start highlighting a little bit with the Lauren Forest. So I'm going between these different shades on my wet palette and just building it up a little bit here and there. And again, make sure it's fairly thin. And on your wet palette, you wanna take a look and see how it's beading across here. That's how thin you wanna get the paint. So add a little bit of water if you need to, but I'm gonna start building up some of his highlights, mainly the top of his, where the light is gonna shine down. So under his legs, you're gonna keep that dark, but on the top here, maybe on the skin here up top, highlight that. Tops of his legs, uh, maybe a little bit in his mouth here. Anywhere where you know that the light might reflect down and add a little bit of highlight to him. I'm also gonna add some Rackarth flesh muck to my wet palette as well. I'm gonna kind of create a, a blend between the Lauren Forest and Rackarth flesh, just add some further highlights to his skin. So I'm gonna add this to the tops of his hands, uh, maybe the tops of his legs, anywhere where I wanna build up a little bit more highlight, his knuckles, his hands, the tops of his legs. I'm really working between the different shades, just building up different highlights. So I might go back to a little bit of the Lauren Forest, and while it's still wet, just kind of blend these two. So a little bit of the Rackarth Flesh and the Lauren Forest, building that up and then mixing those two. I'm also gonna highlight maybe his jaw, his neck, just going around and adding highlights wherever, I, wherever the light is gonna hit. But you're gonna keep working and building up highlights and then once you're done and you're happy where it's at, we're gonna do some shading. We're gonna to switch to Seraphim Sepia. You can make sure it's completely dry and we're gonna start adding this into some of the different crevices, different creases in the model. I'm gonna actually go over a lot of his skin with this, just avoiding some of the highlights. Probably about 80-90% of the skin I'm gonna use Seraphim Sepia. But after that, I'm gonna to switch to Jukai Violet. And you can wait for it, this air from CP to dry. I'm gonna add some of this in just to add a little bit of purple, a little bit of color to them. But this I'm mainly gonna focus on the darker areas in the creases in his skin, maybe the lower half of his leg here. Maybe in some of the crevices on his back, a little bit in his foot. Again, mainly his dark areas in his skin. Once you're done with the shading, 
Maybe go back and retouch up some of the highlights as needed. Again, you wanna let the shading completely dry before you do. Before you move on to the next step, you wanna make sure all your highlights are done, make sure it's completely dry, and then touch up any of the armor that you need to using the gloss black. But once that's completely dry and you're ready to move on, then we're gonna use a color shift metal paint by Green Stuff World called Darth Blue. You're not gonna add this to a wet palette. Instead, I'm gonna add this to just this plastic palette here. Now this paint applies on fairly thin. So, and you wanna make sure you give it a really good shake before you use this. So what I'm gonna do, as you can see, I'm gonna actually take, take my brush and I'm gonna get a little bit off of it using a paper towel. You don't want it to pull up. And then I'm just gonna go over all of his armor, all of his exoskeleton using this paint. Again, it goes on fairly thin. You don't wanna to apply too thick. And you also wanna let it dry in between coats. I found about three or four layers works really well. So let it dry between each layer and then keep applying it until you get the desired look. As you can see right here, this is after about four coats that I've applied. So keep doing that, keep building it up and apply different layers. You wanna apply this to all of the armor, his tails, everywhere. Everywhere except for his skin, basically. So go ahead and do that, and then if you need to, go and hit pause at this point, and then once you're done, let it completely dry, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, once you're done with the armor, we're gonna go ahead and now move on to the base. So for the base, we're gonna start with lead belcher, and we're gonna get a dry brush, and we're gonna dry the brush this on. So get a lot of the excess paint off of your dry brush, maybe using a paper towel or something, and then we're just gonna go ahead and go over all of the base here. Once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and take some typhus corrosion. And then this, we're just gonna put on wherever we want rust. So I'm gonna add a little bit of rust to the base. So I'm just gonna dab this on in a few select areas. You can add on as much as you want or as little as you want, depending on how much rust you wanna add on here. While that typhus corrosion is drying, I'm gonna actually switch over to Stormhost Silver. I'm gonna take a little bit of that and I'm gonna paint his teeth. Maybe add a little bit of highlight here and there on his armor once that's completely dry. Not very much, um, just maybe these little tips here on the side and mainly just his teeth. And then once the typhus corrosion is completely dry, we're gonna go ahead and now switch over to Rise of Rust. And we're gonna take our dry brush, make sure it's clean and dry. And then we're gonna put this on and then get a lot of the excess paint off of our brush again. And then we're gonna go over the typhus corrosion with the rise of rust. And this is gonna add our rust look to the base. And I'm just gonna continually work around adding a little bit here and there. Okay, but once I'm done with that, I'm gonna now take some moot green and I'm gonna add this to my wet palette. So ignore this other green that's here off to the side of my moot green. That was a scarsnet green that I added, but we're not gonna use that. I'm gonna take some Death World Forest and I'm gonna add this to my wet palette as well. Now the Death World Forest and the moot green, we're gonna mix these two to create the base for our slime. I'm also gonna take some Flash Gets Yellow and add this to my wet palette as well, just off to the side next to moot green. Now I'm gonna switch between the the mid tone from the moot green and the death world forest, and then also the moot green. But I'm gonna start dabbing on wherever I want the slime. And this, it's completely up to you, however much or however little slime you wanna to add to the base. While it's wet, I'm gonna take some flash gets yellow and just swirl this in into the main areas of the green that we created. I'm gonna add a little bit of this onto his mouth as well. Okay, but once you're done with that, let it completely dry. And then once it is, we're gonna take some Nurgle's Rot, and then we're gonna go ahead and apply this over the, the base for the slime. With the Nurgle's Rot, you wanna apply this and then let it dry and then just keep building it up as much as you want. I'm gonna add a little bit into his mouth as well. Might even take some and add a little bit onto his hands and then maybe even into his, his tails, just here and there. Maybe I'll dab on a little bit onto the ends of his spikes here. Maybe a little bit into his legs. Just random places here and there on, 
on the intruder. And then I'm gonna go back once the base is dry, I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Just keep building this up a little bit, make it a little bit more thick on mine. But once you're done with that and it's completely dry, we're gonna now switch to Blood for the Blood God. And I'm gonna take a dry brush and I'm gonna just start dabbing this on in different places. I'm gonna start with the base and just dab and then just kind of smear it around just to give it a nice smeared look here with the blood. So I'm just gonna dab it on and then just smear it around here and there on his base. I'm gonna put some on the intruder itself. I'm gonna add some on the tips here as, as if he just got done tearing some apart. I'm gonna add some in his mouth, maybe a little bit on his legs as if the blood kind of splattered around here and there. I'm just gonna keep dabbing it around until I get the look that I want. All right, I think this looks pretty cool. Once you're done with that, let that dry. I'm gonna switch back over to a bad and black and I'm gonna go ahead and touch up the base. All right, at this point, I think this looks good. I think I am getting close to being done. Once you're finished, then let that completely dry and then go ahead and seal it with a lacquer. And then you wanna let that lacquer dry completely. And then we're gonna go ahead and apply some Art Coat. Art Coat is gonna help give it a little bit of a wet look to the intruder. After I go done sealing it with a lacquer, the armor looks a little bit dull. So I'm gonna apply the Art Coat to all the armor, all the exoskeleton, his tails, everywhere we apply the color shift paint. I'm also gonna apply this to all of the blood, all of the slime here on the base, as well as a little bit on his legs. I'm gonna be a little more precise on where I'm gonna apply this into the intruder itself under the skin. I wanna give it kind of a wet look, not just on the armor, also in his mouth, maybe a little bit on his hands, a little bit into his legs, just different places on his skin. Not just the armor, but a little bit on his skin as well, just to give him a little bit of a wet look. But after that, I think we are done. I think this looks pretty cool. I really like how this turned out. I really like that color shift paint as well. How it changes a little bit in the light. I think it's pretty cool. I'm excited how this turned out. If you like this video, and if you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe below. And you can also head over to my Patreon page if you'd like to support further videos. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found some useful tips along the way. As always, thanks again for watching and painting with Nerd Paints.